So uh, let's start right away. Uh, you will hear about the Chemexon story. But what is the Chemexon story? As most of you probably know already, uh, we've been developing toolkits for the pharmaceutical industry and the biotech industry for, for 17 years now, since 1998. And we've been mostly focusing so far on small compounds drug discovery. Uh, and actually, it seems that we are becoming uh, the chemistry standard uh, in this industry, as indicated by uh, a lot of partner relationships that we have been having. Uh, for instance, one of the most recently signed a strategic collaboration with IDBS. But we also realized that we cannot stick with small compound drug discovery because the industry is moving much more towards large molecule development. So we have started to develop uh, a biomolecule toolkit to support uh, the storage and search of biolog biological entities as well. Now, besides these two industries, uh, we have also uh, moved our focus towards general chemistry, uh, the world of polymers, petrochemistry, agrochemistry, and, and flavors and fragrances as well. Now, from a slightly different point of view, uh, we have also expanded how we provide our technology to our users. Uh, like I said, traditional, traditionally we were a toolkit company, and this is still a very important part of our portfolio to provide our APIs to be integrated with third-party applications. But besides that, we are also move, moving to provide full solutions for chemists. The first step towards this was desktop application, Instant JCAM. Most of you might be familiar with that. Uh, but that was just the first step, uh, and that was only covering some part of our portfolio. What we're trying to do with Plexus Suite is provide a full set of solutions uh, for drug discovery, and not just drug discovery. Uh, like I said, Instant JCAM was a desktop solution. Plexus Suite, in contrast, uh, is a web-based toolkit. So we are moving towards uh, the web-based technologies, uh, or to be more precise, uh, web applications. And also, on the long run, uh, we tend to uh, provide hosted solutions uh, for our clients. Now, one problem or issue with our portfolio used to be uh, that we were developing separate applications that could communicate with each other, but were not uh, tightly connected enough. And therefore, we are also changing this strategy to provide a single unified platform. And we believe that Plexus Suite will be this particular platform. We are not quite there yet, but, but that's where we are going right now. Uh, like I mentioned in, in, the, in the introduction, uh, we are also moving from small compounds to, to the support of biological entities, and also from supporting just structure-based storage to support something that is uh, more integrated, to be able to, uh, to create document repositories, to be able to carry out chemistry-based searches in document repositories, uh, as the nature of data that you need to deal with uh, is also changing somewhat. There are a lot of changes, as you can see, and there are a lot of expansions. And there are two things that we still want to maintain, and not just to maintain, but also increase. That is the quality of the code that we provide to you and also the responsiveness of the development process itself. Now, with all these changes uh, and all these expansions, how can we maintain these two things? We realized that what we need to do is introduce a new release policy uh, in order to, uh, to achieve these two goals. So before uh, the 7th of July, 2014, uh, we had three to four releases a year three to four major releases a year. And then we also had patch releases, of course. Uh, this meant that we had very long development cycles of about three months, which were then followed uh, by a very, very focused and in intensive testing period, where we were trying to identify all the bugs and correct them. Uh, but this was, of course, very difficult. Uh, sometimes, unfortunately, we only had to fix the major bugs, the, 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 bl the blocker bugs, and bugs were just accumulating over time. Uh, this also meant that we could only provide a somewhat lower quality code. And on the other hand, uh, the other drawback of this strategy was that we could provide bug fixes and new features to our clients much more slowly. Now, in contrast to all this, uh, in the new release framework, we have introduced a new test system that also ensures 
that continuous testing is carried out on the code all the time. We are, re we are releasing uh, our software week by week. And this means that the development, the developers are in a way forced to provide release quality code all the time. So the testing is continuous. And this also means that we can catch and fix bugs immediately. The bugs do not accumulate over time. And we are really convinced that this will result, or actually this is resulting in higher quality and more stable code. And equally important to this is that features and bug fixes can be can be provided to you uh, much more quick, much 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 quicker. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that we have not introduced the rolling releases because Google and Firefox and Tesla is doing it because it's becoming industry standard, which actually it is. But rather be because we really very strongly believe that that's the right way to go to achieve higher quality code. So some numbers. Uh, this is just one example. Uh, these are the bugs in the JCAM base and JCAM cartridge products uh, before uh, the new release policy has been introduced and after the new release policy has been introduced. These are not just any bugs. These are the ones that have passed all the tests, internal and external, and even user evaluations. So these are the bugs that got into production, actually. And as you can see, uh, the number of these bugs have dropped uh, to approximately one third uh, compared to the old release um, uh, strategy. And this is in a 10 month period, and, and we are talking um, about numbers around 40 something and 13 or 15 or something like that. Uh, this is just one example. Of course, if you are interested, we can share uh, more uh, statistics with you. And also, we are more than happy to share the new test system with you, so you can look yourself how it is working and, and, and try it for yourself. Now, the mentality that we have introduced, <coughs> I'm sorry, the net mentality that we have introduced uh, in the testing and releasing process has also emerged to, to the development policy of new products. So, this results in uh, um, in the tendency of us validating our ideas very quickly. Uh, we try to fail fast and fail often and try to be brave, but also collect as much feedback from our users as possible. And, um, and we believe that this ends up in higher quality and more robust code for the new products and new features from the beginning on, because applying the new testing strategy on these new products is very easy. And also, the, the very quick product releases means for us that we can collect feedback very quick, quickly from you, and therefore can be very responsive to your needs. Right, so we are still focusing mostly on the pharmaceutical industry, and what you see here is a very much simplified drug discovery workflow. <clears throat> uh, so first I thought that I would, I would show you how the individual bits and pieces in our portfolio fits into this workflow. But, I, but then I realized that actually simplifying this even further to what cheminformatics actually can provide in a few steps would make more sense. So, so this is how the next two blocks will be built up. We will be focusing on creating chemical content, starting with the individual structures, discussing chemistry <coughs> in a collaborative fashion, uh, and also creating collections of, of, of molecules or virtual libraries, then how you can search uh, the chemical content that has been generated uh, this way. Then we'll switch to uh, compound characterization and how you can carry out more complex analysis. And then the result of the work, uh, of course, should be published in one way or another, reporting to your management, published in, uh, um, in journals and so on. And also the resulting documents or incoming documents should be somehow stored uh, and analyzed. So this is what, what uh, the last session will be about. Now, how do the actual products fit into this workflow? We will show you how Marvin JS can create uh, advanced high quality drawings uh, in a web uh, environment. Then how Marvin Live, the collaborative platform, is using Marvin JS. To, to provide this in a collaborative fashion. Uh, then we will show you how um, virtual libraries can be generated with Plexus Design. 
then we'll discuss how generated content can be put into databases and searched. Instant J can will be uh, one of these products that will be responsible for that. We will discuss compound registration, how you can actually migrate uh, this data into a registration database. Then in relation to that, we will also discuss how the biomolecular toolkit has been developed over the last year uh, and in which stage it is right now. Now, having just chemistry content is one thing. On the other hand, you also want to maintain documents in your databases. And Plexus Mining uh, um, is, is the tool that can do that, so we will be discussing that as well. Now, the basis for all this, for the searching in this content, is Plexus Connect. And the background infrastructure is provided by JCAM Base and JCAM Cartridge. We also discussed the JCAM Postgres strategy, which is a new release. Uh, now, the cartridges are typically the toolkits that provide access to these databases for third party application. For the analysis, we will discuss the discovery tools, also for library cross checks. And you will also hear a few words about how NIME can contribute to this, how to carry out complex analysis and so on. And last but definitely not least, Effie will show you how publication quality drawings can be done in, in Marvin Classic, how you can uh, maintain chemistry in documents that, that can then be published, how these published documents can then be maintained in a database using JCAM for SharePoint, And then we also discuss how existing documents can be analyzed, including patents uh, and publications in Chem Curator. And in the last presentation, you will hear about Compliance Checker, which is responsible for managing uh, control substances. Now, this whole thing fits together into a single big picture. What you see here in orange are the new products. So as you can see, there have been a lot of development over the last year. Uh, I think this is a really complex uh, figure, so you really don't have to look at this much longer <laughs> to ease the pain. So this is the agenda for the first block. Uh, you will have a chance to ask questions after each talk, uh, a very short time. So if there is any question stuck in you, please don't hesitate to ask them at the end of each session, so uh, at the end of this first block. Uh, and then we also have set up some demo stations in, here uh, in front of, uh, of this room. Um, I think it would be a good chance for you to, to go there and discuss with the product owners their products individually. So first up is Effie with Marvin JS, and she will be telling you about how you can do advanced chemical drawing in a web environment. So. 